Yours. Okay, great volley, great volley. Uh, that's a little, you know, never wear a red shirt when you're poaching, okay? Try to wear something that blends in a little bit better, like a nice dark green shirt would be nice. Did I send you an instant message on that one? I leave a little too early? A little bit? Okay. See, these guys are so nice. All right, partner. Okay, great pickup there. I should have poached on that one too, but I had a big omelet for breakfast this morning. <laughs> and say, the last thing I'll say about this is say, uh, uh, young Jonathan cranks his first serve up to 120 or 130 like he can, you know, to take a little pressure off Louie on the first serve, you know, I'm gonna go in the two back position here. And that really, it, it kind of takes away Brock's target here and it takes a little pressure off Louie, so we could play a point more from here. And go ahead, hit that bigger first serve here. Well, maybe not quite that big. Just out. Your spot shot, did you guys see that? Just out. Second serve. We'll still stay back here. We'll work the groundies a little bit. That's a second serve? Gee, kids are animals these days. It hit a hit an over 40 second serve that everybody can relate to. You know, like a 65 mile an hour kick. Come on, slow, there you go. Good, nice, all right, that's good. Louie, let's hear it for Louie, folks. He was out all night and he got up here at 8.30 to do this. Okay, so uh, that's basically the four positions here. And we're gonna get Jeff back out on the court. Uh, any questions at all, kind of on those four things before we get into something else? Yes, sir. I just wanted to ask you, kind of specifically uh, as a scale of measurement, when is the best time to make your split stop? I mean, the split step when, when you're, is it when the ball bounces on the other side of the court, or when do you make your, your step? That's a good question. The question is, when do you time the split step? I always like to time the split step uh, when, they're, when they're taking their backswing, right? right before they hit the ball. You know, and I, I always want to be, I always want to be balanced. Say if I'm hitting a ball to, to Jonathan here, right before he hits the ball, I'm going to split. Now I can move in all four directions. You, know, you just want to be, you really want to be balanced twice on a tennis court. You'd love to be balanced when you're hitting the ball so you can hit a good shot, you know, because obviously you're hitting better shots on balance as opposed to off balance. And you always want to be balanced when your opponents hit the ball so you can react to the ball. You know, I, I mean, in doubles in particular, too many people get hung up. They think, I've got to get to a certain spot. You know, when they're playing doubles, maybe they're running in from three-quarter court, and they go, I've got to get to the service line. So, you know, I'm running to get to the service line as Brock is hitting a lob over one of the guy's heads, and then I can't react to the ball. There is no magic spot to get to on the doubles court. The more magic thing is to be balanced when your opponents hit the ball. And then you can react. So say I get a, a wide, say he hits a nice shot over in the alley. I come in, I square up, I split, so I'm square. And now he hits one over here. Now I can react and make a nice move on that volley to cut the angle on the volley. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think it's good to teach, you know, just my, just my own little personal philosophy of coaching is to teach an all-court game from a very early age. You know, if, if you don't introduce the mid-court game and the front-court game to kids until they're 17, that's way too late. I'm working with, a, with an eight-year-old eight now, and I'm teaching him a nice all-court game. And he's pretty good in the mid-court and the front-court already. He's only eight. You can imagine in eight more years, He's got eight more years of experience in the mid-court and the front-court, as well as playing great baseline tennis. So, yes, sir. Okay, that, that's a good point. What it, his, his kind of point to my positioning on the server, server's partner was, if I stand too far back, that gives him a little better angle to get it down lower. That's true if I go straight across. But, you know, you know the, the key from this position 
is to always move at an angle, so I'm cutting off the ball right away because I'm moving at a 90 degree angle to the ball and I'm going to get it up higher. You know, if I move straight across, that would be true, but you always got to cut the angles. And by starting at half court, not only can you cover your own overhead a lot better, but, you know, if you really get, get that movement down at the angles, you're going to be fine. And, and the also, the other part of the poach, or the movement across, is leading with that racket to keep that racket out in front so you can get it before hopefully it gets down below the net. Yeah, one more question and then we'll go on. Strategically, when do you play with your partner up and, and when do you play back? You just demonstrated sometimes right. you play back to take yeah. the pressure off. Good, good question. Uh, you know, basically, you know, if your opponents have a really big first serve and you, you have a real hard time controlling the, not only getting your racket on them, but controlling it, you know, it, it takes a lot of pressure off the receiver if, if I'm not up in the, in the one up position here. So a lot of times, you know, if, if Tim and I played like Kern and Denton, good example, they were two huge servers. So when we played Kern and Denton, we played two back on the first serve, and then when they missed their first serve, we'd go in the one up, one back position. It just takes a lot of pressure off. All right, we're going to get Jeff out here, and uh, we're going to go over the serving team. You guys want to serve? We've got to give these guys all the advantage they can. Do you want to serve or receive? 40 loves serving. Okay. Okay, so we're going to kind of focus on the, on the serving team right now. And uh, one of the things, see, the nice thing about a lefty and righty is, actually, Jeff should serve on this side. If we were switching sides, on the other side, he'd be looking right in the sun. Yeah, that's one of the great things about a lefty-righty team. You never have to serve in the sun, which is a beautiful thing. Take a couple serves here, Jeff, to loosen up. Well, so let's, uh, you know, tennis is a holding game. And I think that's one thing that doesn't get emphasized enough sometimes. you got to hold serve. You know, if you hold serve, worst case is you're in a tiebreaker. You know, so we really got to focus on how do we hold serve as a serving team. And, uh, you know, a lot of first serves in. Take a few more to get ready here. Yeah, and also good communication with your partner. And uh, one thing that that I would like to talk about just very quickly is the signal tennis. You know, a lot of players on the tour use the signals, and the typical signal would be, and just because I'm turning my back on you, please don't take this wrong, okay? Uh, the typical signal would be, uh, I want you to serve down the tee, and I'm going to cross, okay? you know, where the serve should go and what I'm going to do. Those are the two basic things. But the, the thing I don't like about signals is, you know, if Louis gives Jeff a signal, you know, Jeff's got the ball in his hand. You know, Jeff knows where his better serves are. And certainly in bigger points in the match, I would much rather have the server dictate what's happening as opposed to the server's partner giving signals. You know, and, and that... And that is, is probably the best reason why, you know, Jeff and Louis should talk and, and Jeff should say, hey, I'm going out wide to the forehand. I want you to fake and stay. So I, I personally like to, the server to dictate where he's going to serve and then tell his partner, I want you to fake and stay or I want you to go. And that way the server controls it, especially on the big points. You know, when I'm down break point, I never wanted Tim to tell me where to serve. You know, maybe, I, maybe I'm playing a guy 6'6", six, six, like Victor Amaya, and I want to hit it right into his body and, and, and jam him a lot, you know? So uh, let's, let's, uh, <coughs> let's play out a few points here and, and kind of at a higher level here. And uh, let's, let's work on the serving team here. Or are you going to talk? Okay. Any questions? Any questions on that point? Uh, okay. Split them up now? Should we split them up now? No, no. We got the old guys. That was just lucky. He hit it late. That's, that's the L and L shot. Late and lucky. That's all that was. Okay. Why don't you talk? You know, 
Another thing, yeah, talk to each other. That way, you know, you can kind of give encouragement, too. That's another good reason to talk as opposed to signals. Uh, talk, you know, can give and encourage. Come on, partner, let's go. You know, just a little positive reinforcement with your partner. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay, good. Good second, sir. We'll take that. A little rose from Brock. Yeah, he still got it. Yeah, let's uh, let's get some plants. <laughs> okay, little chip lob. Good idea. That's what we like. The first serve in. Thirty fifteen. They're already going against my coaching and giving signals all the time. Nice. Nice serve. And see how Louie slid out wide there to cover that down the line shot. That's good movement toward the ball. What we, really, what we do is we give you a signal. Yeah, if I don't like it, I take them off like a picture and pitch. Okay. I like that. Okay. Technical. Yes, sir. So there's the standard formation, the Australian formation. I've right. seen a lot of people now are accessing the like going like half off, semi off, like starting to be certain there, starting to be like this. Wow. They must be moving pretty well to do that. Not in the 40s. Yeah. So we're going to try a different formation here. Let's try the uh, jack-in-the-box uh, position here, where you get down low, right in the middle. Get down low. OK, get down. You got to get down a little bit, Louie. OK, there we go. Nice. All right, there's game for the boys. Okay, let's have uh, Jonathan serve a game now. All right, they help. So these guys, you know, they're saying we're going to let up on these old guys and let them get a few back here. Out, out of reach or outstanding? Okay, maybe a little bit of both there. Yeah, that wasn't a good point. Very good point. Very good point here. It wasn't over 100. You don't have to serve over 100. It's all about, like, real estate a little bit. It's location, right? Thank you for coming. Any questions on that point? No. Here you go. Dirty love. Now, Jeff. Jonathan's serving pretty big here. Let's go two back here. Let's see if we can grind a few in and make him hit a few volleys at least. Oh. Nice return by the old guys. Let's hear it for the old guys. Yeah. Is anybody under 21 in the audience? No? Sorry, guys, you don't have much support. It's like a senior Davis Cup match here. All right, they're talking. They're getting their game plan. See, the nice thing, like, Cohen's wearing shades so they can't read his eyes. That's very good strategic play. All right, you going to move in, Louie, or not? Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay, tried to run around, and uh, good decision, but the footwork quite wasn't there. That was a good second serve. So you know, when you're playing against somebody with a good second serve, rather than trying to run around, 
Maybe you just really focus on taking it early wherever it comes and, and trying to get it down. We got 45 here. That's good. <laughs> okay, nice game for the boys. Louis, sir. Got our game plan? Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. These guys aren't used to seeing the slow of a ball. Guys, count to five before you swing. As soon as they toss it up, 1,001 by five, it should get there. Okay. Now, one thing you can do there, uh, he tried the angle. Really, one thing, uh, when Sampras and Todd Martin beat the Russians in doubles in their Davis Cup final, Pete was playing on the deuce court. And what I told him was, once you get the return back, all I want you to do is hit your forehand as hard as you can right over the net strap, right down the middle of the court. Yeah, just come up to the net. Because that's typically in the gap. You always, when you're playing doubles, you always look for the gaps. Okay, and hitting it over the net strap is kind of in the gap here between these two guys. And then you got a 6'6 six, six Todd Martin here standing in here. He knows if Sanford rips a forehand, and he can kind of get over here and have a nice little heyday with the high forehand volley. So uh, one of the general things in doubles on second shots, what I like to see, is, is early in the match, right at the beginning, just hit a lot of balls right over the net strap. Because obviously, hopefully, you'll never hit it wide if you're aiming there. It, it gets your partner really involved, you know, because he or she knows that, hey, second shot's going over the net strap. And then what it does, it, it gets these two guys really being aware that they're going to hit most of the balls down the middle. And then when you got a 30 40 point, you know, I would say to Tim, you know, I'm going to hit, you know, if the return comes back to me, I'm going to hit my first forehand down the line after you know, playing a lot of balls down the middle and getting these guys kind of thinking that the ball's coming down the middle. So that's, that's a, just a good kind of fundamental thing to do to, uh, in terms of uh, tactics of, of where to hit the ball. Yeah. Nice, that's it. See, the old guy's getting a lot of first serves in. You know, they're using what we call the gravity serve. The thing that brings it down is gravity. Yeah, good, sir. Yeah. Yeah, our ad, yeah, receiving, yeah. You know, sometimes when you're really trying to get that break and you've hit a lot of second shots down the middle, and then on the break point you say, okay, I'm going to go down the line on the first shot when it comes to Well, let's hang on one second. Let's let's just examine where to return there. Okay. When when this happens, you obviously know he's got to move somewhere, right? So I think you know when you're faced with this position right here, where they're doing this little jack in the box pop up eye thing, you know the best return is really right right at the guy, because he's got to move somewhere. He's not going to jump up and stay right in the middle of the court. That, that'd be a great shot. Let's do that again. Only you can hit it down the line this time. Yes, sir. Nice. See how early that was? Well, that's a great return, folks. He's just just use the speed that the ball was coming. He didn't try to add. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make on the return to serve is, is from that nice turn position, they try to add too much violence to the swing. And you saw Jonathan on that return, he just turned and he just took it nice and early and made a good placement. Well, the, the, the person who's not hitting the ball, the sitting duck, he's got to be a moving duck. 
You know how ducks swim across the water and they look kind of serene, but underneath the water, the legs are paddling like crazy? You know, in, in this position, no, you know, you've got to, you know, the, the quick answer is you've got to move with every shot. So say, uh, why don't you get back there where you were? So he's hitting some balls, and I've got to react to every shot. So say he hits his first ball kind of down the line in the alley, and I, I pinch myself over here. They volley it back to him. Then they hit it over here in this alley. You know, I'm over here. So I'm, I'm really changing my position with every shot. You know, I'm not playing spectator tennis. I'm not just watching. I'm always, you know, and that's the best thing about doubles teams, good ones, they're always moving. You know, if you don't know where to move, just jump in place. It's called kinetic tennis. Just move a little bit. Just jump around. But you're always following the ball. So the ball, you know, Jonathan hits a nice ball right over the net strap. I'm going to move right in here. He hits one over in the alley. I'm going to be here. Hits one over in this alley. I'm going to get right in here. I play what they call navel tennis. I'm going to get my navel right in front of where the ball is going to go. Okay? What's the score? 40 love? 15 love? Okay. Little drop shot there. Where would have been a better shot for Brock to hit that shot? Where would he, he should have hit that ball instead of out wide? Down the middle, right? Yeah, chipping it down the middle. Absolutely. Yeah. Good, sir. Nice, sir. Down. No. Keep it going. Never make young guys angry. Okay? It might come back to haunt you. Nice lob there. Very nice. Good play. Good serving. Yeah, let's hear it for Louie. Louis. Yeah. You must be a professional. Score? Here you go. Double, double latte there. Okay, what is it, deuce or score? Deuce. deuce. Okay, we'll finish this game, then we're going to do a couple drills. <laughs>